To add a new quest, it's as simple as just hovering over that and hovering over quests and add new quest. And like I said, you want these names missions or death matches, whatever you want, you change the name right there. But from for right now, let's just go and add a new quest and you can change the name afterwards. We give our test a title and this is going to be a temporary quest. Um, don't worry about the short code. This is from days of uh, game on gone by. You can set the required rank to lock quests for students who have not reached that level. Right now we're at level one. We're starting out. We have no gold, no experience, no minutes, and this deactivate button is only for administrators. Um, there are presets, and we'll get back and talk about those. But for right now, you can pick any one of these tiers. I want to go ahead and jump to level two. So um, I want to get enough XP to get there. You can have a time filter. Set this so students, if you're keeping track of time, they need to have X amount of minutes, not O time, maybe for something fun. There's all kinds of customizable options here. Now, the points and currency. Points, experience, currency, um, gold. In our setup, you may change these to whatever you want in the options page. You can even, after this, this preset for the tiers, filled out these fields automatically, so it populated these. There are four, see how there are four sets of numbers? There are four stages to a quest. Encounter, accept, completion, and mastery. And you can change those names as well. I'm just going to um, add some numbers here so we get, uh, we get some feedback when we get into the quest. And we'll talk about the structure of quests and you know what the strategy is how you set them up, how you make your quests as, uh, as engaging as possible. And then there's the option to select to make things repeatable. We'll go ahead and leave that for the future. Um, very cool. You can add tags, quest categories. There's lots of power behind this. But for right now, let's just publish this. And we'll have a very simple, generic quest that we can go out and see. Now, let's say, let's go back to our pages because WordPress comes with one page. Rather than just going there, I wanna show you that if we head out to the sample page and when you make a link, this is an example. Let's make a link that leads to our quest. Now, we could go out and get that URL or link to existing content. Open up this twirly and here is our quest right here, Toss Me. It's identified as a quest. The URL is filled out automatically. We can open this in a new window or not. Go ahead and add the link. We'll update this page and then view it. And this would be as if you were adding information for the students and you linked to the quest. So when a student clicks on the quest, I want you to notice a couple things. Here's glitch number two in Game On, is that your points and currency are tracked automatically and live, with one exception, and that is when you first encounter, this is not going to register any change. So when we click on, this is an example which takes us to our quest. We get the growl notification that we got 5 XP, which was the... Uh, the number that was set back on the quest page. Here's the very intriguing con content we added. And this could be your anticipatory set. This could be whatever you want. This is how you introduce this assignment to the students because this really isn't a game. It's a way to gamify your curriculum and it's a delivery system that keeps score, keeps track. There's back-end tools. It is so cool. But for right now, the student reads the information, and maybe it's required. Maybe it's optional. Here's where they have the ability to click. More XP is added. And look, the points that were not added, we got five for each one of those first two phases, were, they weren't lost. It, it was tracked, and you notice we have green here. And we'll get to the color and what that means later on because that's another oh-so-cool feature. So here's where 
for me at least, this is where the meat of the assignment is. This is where what I want the students to do. And this can be self-assessment or it can be a verification and go ahead and complete that quest. You've done what's necessary. So there's more XP and gold. So currency comes into play here. You can do this differently if you want. The idea is we want students completing their projects and then mastery-based learning. What do you want them to do to prove they have mastered the concept? This is where the bulk of the XP is, and this is where students work hard to gain that extra credit. Now, look, once again, we're, we're climbing up this ladder and... I'm hoping, yeah, level two. So I did collect enough XP so that we did jump to the new level. You can see that right now, if we roll over this, we're on level two and we've accumulated gold and XP as we move on. This is 20 out of 165, but this is 170. What's up with that? This is the total amount of XP. This is the amount of XP a student needs in order to get to the next level. Kids understand this. We take time to figure it out. So that, and if you wanted to edit the quest, it's all round trip editing. You come back, you're in your quest field. If you didn't like stuff and kids haven't yet encountered it, you can change points. You can change anything at all. Do your editing. Inside these, um, these WYSIWYG editors, uh, very easy to insert images, links, all the rest. So cool. So other things have happened behind the scenes that we haven't gotten to. If I explained them all, this movie would go on for another hour and a half. That's how easy it is to create a quest, to see the points get tallied. And if, if this doesn't look good to you right now, well, maybe this isn't going to work. But if it doesn't look good to you, ask yourself, why wouldn't I want to use this? If it looks good to the kids, if they like engaging in learning via this vehicle. Think about it.